What are the primary reasons he has returned? He has come to show humanity how to live together in peace as brothers and sisters of one humanity. Mm -hmm. He says, this is easier than you imagine. It requires only the acceptance of the principle of sharing. He says, we have a choice. We could go on in the ways in which we're going now, which are leading us to the edge of a precipice and destroy all life on this planet, or accept that we are brothers and sisters of one humanity under the one God, and therefore the food, the raw materials, the energy, the science, the educational facilities of the world belong to everybody mm. and have to be shared more equitably around the world so that you no longer have what he calls this blasphemy of mil millions of people literally right now starving to death in a world which is overflowing with food. Why has the Christ stayed so behind the scenes when there are millions of people starving in the world? Why doesn't he come out and solve the problem? By karmic law, he cannot simply create all the food and, and share it out and give it to all the starving millions. And we would say, oh, that's good. We don't need to do anything about this, you see? Clap our hands. This absolves us from our right to do it. It's our problem. But this obviously means a, a, a great change in political systems. Indeed. And of course, we're witnessing that taking place right now. Yes. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, what, is, what is his role, if any, he has poured into the world a new energy, which he calls the energy of equilibrium. And this brings about harmony in the world. It acts through the law of action and reaction, which, as you know, are opposite and equal. Mm -hmm. And by its action, its harmonizing action in the world, we will create out of the present violence and tension and discord and uh, unhappy conditions uh, a period of peace, tranquility, mental and emotional poise, and in exact proportion to the existing disharmony, disequilibrium. Through this law of cause and effect, our negative, destructive thinking patterns, thought forms, create the extraordinary disturbance in the weather patterns all over the world. And as soon as we come into equilibri equilibrium, they too, nature itself, will come into equilibrium. So he's seeking to show the interconnectedness of everything. He said everything in creation is composed of atoms, and ev all of that atomic substance is interconnected. So when you, by your destructiveness, destroy the pattern, the existing cohesive pattern in one aspect of that creation, you set loose a chain of reaction which inevitably causes further destruction in other parts of that creation. For instance, the, the major cause of the prevalence of powerful, destructive earthquakes today and all the loss of life that goes mm -hmm. with it is our underground nuclear testing. Atomic testing. And he says every time you destroy the planet, which we're doing, our ecology is totally uh, imbalanced at the moment. We're destroying the very oxygen-producing trees, you know, huge areas every day. He says when you do this, you're actually harming yourself. We have to learn that every harm we do to anything else is a direct harm to ourselves. In thinking about the changes that are happening in the world, uh, people can't help but notice the corruption that is being brought to the surface and certainly being given a lot of airplay by the news media, both in the United States and in Europe as well. Does this have anything to do with the stimulus of Maitreya? This corruption is a purification process. As it rises to the surface, it can be resolved. We recognize it for what it is. Mm -hmm. And more and more, as people respond to the energies which he pours into the world, this takes place and people grow in awareness. They, be, would, they were aware of corruption before, but their awareness was of a different nature. They simply knew it happened. But now they are aware that it is wrong. And that is why they've turned on the leaders in East Germany, in Czechoslovakia, in Romania, in Russia, in Poland, and so on and so on. And one can go on in South Africa and the whole, all over the world. This tendency is towards not only democracy and freedom, but to cleansing the body politic. And so bring in those who really care altruistically about the well-being of all people. So suddenly, in a place like Czechoslovakia, you don't get a politician at the head of affairs, you get a playwright. playwright. And this is foretold by Maitreya. Let's get back to Maitreya himself. 
How does he appear? The most common is to appear to people in their dreams. Mm -hmm. And this has happened to people by the thousand all over the world, in every country. That's the, the most common way. The second is to appear to people as a, as a, a, as a kind of apparition. You know, they have a vision of him. Mm -hmm. It's not a dream. They're awake. But it's not solid either. It's somewhere in between. That's also very common. And then he will appear, just like you, as a solid physical man, suddenly appearing in a room or a street or whatever, people in a park bench sitting there, and he'll suddenly appear beside them, looking however he may wish. He can change his appearance at will. Mm -hmm. Some people see him as an old man, maybe dressed in rags. Other people see him as a young man. Nearly always he dresses in the community in London in white Pakistani clothes with a little skull cap, crocheted skull cap on his head. He's neither young nor old. And he has a bit of a beard, dark beard here, dark, lustrous eyes and very high cheekbones. He's very tall and slim. That's the normal way he's seen. Is he acting alone in this no, coming he out? He will eventually be followed into the world by about 40 masters from all parts of the world. There's one in New York. There's one here in L.A., in the mountains, just above L.A. There is one in London. There's one in Geneva, one in Darjeeling, one in Tokyo, one in Moscow, one in Rome. The one in Rome is the well-known master known to all Christians as Jesus. The master Jesus. Jesus, who was in Palestine, is a great master, works closely with Maitreya moment to moment, and is, has been living in Rome for over three years. The, the Vatican knows this story. They what? know that all I'm saying is true. <laughs> why, why are they keeping a lid on it? You have to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm asking you. I, there must be some reason that you're at least partially privy to. We all know that the Roman Catholic Church is probably the most conservative, the most cautious uh, establishment on earth. So for the Pope to come out with this, in fact, for any representative of the Vatican to come out with this, this is as amazing as the, the coming down of the, of the Berlin Wall. If you've just joined us, we are speaking with Benjamin Krem, who is bringing a message of the reappearance of the Christ, who is not only, he says, Christ for the Christians, but the Messiah to the Jews, the Imamati to the Muslims, and to some other Muslims, the Messiah as well, Krishna to the Hindus, and the fifth Buddha to Buddhists. Give us average folk a sense of what the mission is and what role we have to play in it, because I assume that they're not just going to wave a magic wand. Absolutely not. We have to change the world. There are scientists By what in means? the Soviet Union and in the United States, and this is known to the governments in each country, who have been given the beginnings of a new technology, which Maitreya calls the technology of light. And this is known to your leaders, it is known to the Russian leaders, if the superpowers can live together in peace, then the whole of humanity can live together. What about the relationship with the so-called third world? This is something else. This has yet to be addressed. The developed world uses and wastes 83% of the resources of the world. The yes, developing world, where the vast majority of the world's population are, have to make do with 17%. But you know what, and people don't know, they say, well, we give them aid and we give them all the help we can. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that aid amounts to? What's that? It's really a form of usury. Last year, $40 billion more came from the developing world to the developed world in repayment of loans, the interest on the loans, than went the other way in new loans. $40 billion. Isn't the whole international monetary system or systems part of the problem too? Indeed. He says the new creed of all the nations is the economy. And at the basis of this is what is called market forces. Now market forces he calls satanic forces. They follow only greed and possessiveness. Mm -hmm. They don't answer necessity. If they answered necessity, then they would be good. But they don't answer the necessity. The necessity, for instance, of the third world, mm -hmm. who are also dominated by market forces, but market forces manipulated by the developed world. Greed and possessiveness is the result of conditioning. It's the result, he says, of people not knowing who they are. 